welcome everybody today i have come up with another interview regarding aml interview question series in my retail banking to corporate uh, channel so welcome you all thank you all for your positive response on my earlier videos uh, kindly comment on the videos which i have uploaded and see them more than once since you know if you want to generate you get an understanding of aml kyc they, they are kind they are having much information on to it so in earlier one of my video i promised that i will come with a video on cdd cdd is a very large concept so this is the part one of cdd that go ahead with it so first of all what is cdd so cdd is identifying the customer and verifying the customer identity using reliable and independent source document so in cdd what we do we identify and verify customer document now it is having a couple of words i have highlighted in that that is independent source document reliable and independent source document uh, explain you in retail matters like so somebody is coming with a pan card and aadhar card so we cross verify the pan card with income tax website and aadhar with our with otp or biometric same way in us if they are coming with certain documents like their ssn number or their driving license then we will you know cross check with our uh, back end or with the government website to authenticate it whether it is correct or not so whomsoever source we are using it uh, whatsoever it may be we need to go to the government site and the reliable and independent site we cannot just you know google it and see whether it is okay or not we need to adhere to the cip guidelines of the organization coming on the second part data or information uh, that and identifying the beneficial owner and taking reasonable measure to verify the identity of the beneficial owner so in cdd after we are verifying the document we need to identify who is the actual owner if it is an entity and if it is an individual account we need to identify him after getting after do, you know doing a background check on the id we are able to determine it and third understanding and obtaining information on the purpose and intent nature of the business relationship along with uh, continuing ongoing due diligence on the business relationship this ongoing due diligence is nothing but transaction monitoring so uh, the third point what it elaborates is that we need to understand what is the entity what is the purpose of him the opening the account and what is the nature of business he is willing to do in that along with that after account is opened we also need to do a ongoing due diligence so the cdd if we are answering the cdd uh, we will say that cdd is you know, customer due diligence that is a kind of a very incomplete and immature definition if we are willing to you know crack into aml domain then we need to give a comprehensive definition which include all the three points starting with you know uh, you know verify and identify customer uh, document second uh, need to identify the beneficial owner and uh, take multiple measures to identify it and third uh, what is the nature of uh, business they are willing to open what kind of transaction they are willing to open and we will do a due diligence on to it uh, ongoing due diligence now adding on to that scrutiny of transaction uh, undertaken throughout the course of the relationship to ensure that the transaction being conducted and considered with institution knowledge of the customer their business risk profile and whatsoever necessary source of fund so what does it mean is that if we are enhancing a cdd in transaction monitoring then we need to check for the knowledge then we need to you know cross check uh, the profile of the customer which is with us second uh, the type of business which they are doing third their risk profile which has been generated and fourth their source of fund uh, cdd is not only uh, you know involved in onboarding the customer after onboarding also transaction monitoring is a continuous process so if something comes in transaction something red flag come up so in transaction monitoring also the first stage would be cdd only so in cdd in such cases then whatsoever profile of the customer we are having with us we need to cross check that then we see what kind of business he was telling and what he is doing third we will check the risk profile we have till now accumulated from the onboarding till the transaction monitoring and fourth we will see the source of fund as he has told us this profile whether it is matching with it or not so cdd is a ongoing process it is not only limited to onboarding now since i have highlighted couple of terms in the video so i am going to explain on to that also so beneficial owner was one of the term let me tell you what is a beneficial owner the term beneficial owner has two different definition depending upon the context first natural person who is ultimately own or control account through which a transaction is being conducted this definition is a self explanatory one where it tells that the person uh, if he is having a individual account or having a individual entity account if he is the only owner then he is a beneficial owner of the account only and second the natural person who has significant ownership as well as those who exercise ultimate effective control or over a legal person or a arrangement 
the second definition what it term to you know tries to tell us is that the person who is having a majority stakeholder in a trust in a current account or holding significant position is the actual beneficiary owner giving you an example suppose a company is owned by three brothers where the first brother is having a ownership of 40% and the next two brothers are having ownership of 30 and 30% so all three are beneficial owner in the organization but the person who is having 40% is kind of the major beneficial owner there is a term in when we are discussing about uh, you know beneficial owner ubo that is ultimate beneficiary owner if any of you have given any recent aml kyc interview this ubo term you have come across so ubo is ultimately beneficial ultimate beneficiary owner it is a very critical concept in aml and question related to that also ben, uh, comes very frequently so i will i am i was i am going to explain this ubo in my coming videos so stay tuned to it now there is an example which i have given uh, on the screen that uh, you know a person who is into construction business having multiple construction business where there is a series a series b and series c ownership after that it is owned by a parent co llc where there will be list multiple director multiple joint owner and after that that single entity is owned by a single person so the single person is a beneficial owner and for that we need to do our cdd cdd identifies who is the beneficial owner and after there is another example which i am willing to show you that a family hudco llc in us mostly current account are in llc structure so all the three are beneficial owner as i given you earlier example like three brothers 40 30 30% 30%, so all three are beneficial owner of the organization so beneficial owner is not that it need to be individual only it could be a group it could be a trust it could be more than one also now coming on the second term which i highlighted source of fund so source of fund uh, and source of wealth are are very relative terms they sound uh, you know synchronous with each other but kind of the, the answer is different and this is also a very common question our aval kyc interview so let me explain you regarding the source of fund so it can be made up of income saving inheritance gifts inheritance is not a correct i like to remedy that uh, it is made up of income savings gift etc it is about the origin of money that is going to come in a specific transaction in a more precious amount point the activity it came from this lead to more of a focus on transaction monitoring and customer due diligence what it mean to say is that any transaction which is coming from point a to point b that is having a specific reason that is having a specific point and the justification and there is a very nice justification on to it source of fund is the salary which we earn or the income which we get as a rental income or the money which we gain come uh, you know we get after selling of a property can be defined as a source of fund let me give a couple of example of it our salary is a source of fund the money which we get as a rental income or the income which we get after selling a house is our source of fund okay but there, there is a criticality in uh, source of fund what is meant that source of fund monitor can be wrong also when it comes to uh, countering financial terrorism as it is not uncommon for terrorists to use the earning from legitimate means to fund horrific act so while doing cdd if somebody is saying that i am a salaried person or i am having a business so his source of fund would reflect that only if a person who is having a salary account with us started to receive multiple wire transfers in his account or any bulk lottery amount in his account it is not matching so we will uh, check his profile and according to the description whatsoever source of fund they have given we will cross check it so therefore source of fund is very important now coming to the second part which i discussed Uh, as source of fund is monitored uh, but uh, you know keeping a red flag on source of fund uh, doesn't provide to be much uh, effective in the case of terror financing because in terror financing uh, it is not like that only illegitimate money or the money which is being obtained from illegal activities will be used sometime money which is being given for donation or people who have contributed the money for humanitarian purpose is also diverted to criminal activities to terrorist activities therefore source of fund is not take, uh, giving red flag on source of fund sometime provide sometime you know suffice to be uh, insufficient so now coming to the source of wealth since both are very critical now source of wealth it encompasses everything that could be looked uh, at for asset as well as more historical transaction that is long term savings and look at non liquid asset of the person like car collection virtual asset precious stone metals and even possible things like vintage video games so what it does to mean is that the money which has come somebody has earned from a will or somebody has inherited a very large income from somewhere so that is source of wealth uh, giving you a very finite example if somebody a rich merchant after his death has 
as surrendered a part of his business to his son or his daughter so that is his source of wealth the you know inheritance which we get from our parent is kind of source of wealth only so uh, uh, i know uh, and therefore it, uh, you know source of wealth and source of wealth sound to be very similar but they are different so while in cdd whatsoever profile customer justify with us we need to cross check it and same way we distinguish between source of fund and source of wealth but same way in source of wealth there is a red flag that uh, it is became difficult sometimes to identify whether the source of wealth is genuine or not because giving a very uh, example in retail somebody suppose suppose uh, our some of our customers having relatives in dubai gulf countries in other uh, european nation and suppose they send some money to india as a gift to somebody so we do not know the money which has come from abroad is legal or illegal because you know there is a, there are tax havens where people stash their illegal money and they remit it back to their own country in the term of funds in the term of charity in terms of gifts so we cannot be that much sure that the source of wealth which is in the scene is completely legal so there is a red flag on to it also so today this is the part where i have explained the cdd i have cdd explained only initially cdd is a very long concept so thank you for watching my video if you like my video kindly subscribe it kindly comment on to it and tell me how i can improve my video thank you for your time